I'm Joe Vito with American Songwriter, and we're here in the Gibson Garage in Nashville, Tennessee. And joining us is the beach cowboy himself, Brian Kelly. What's well, good, brother? We're so happy to have you. My cup is overflowing, man. I, I couldn't be happier. My debut album is out and ready for the world to hear, and uh, just feeling very grateful. Well, we're so grateful to be able to talk to you about it. I know that you'd been thinking of making a solo record for some time, but it wasn't really until the pandemic that you got the chance to really kind of pick the time and make it. What was the pandemic like for you? Dude, I think I came out the other side a better person, a better songwriter, a better husband. I really uh, dove into my faith and my wife and I's relationship got stronger. And I think our lives truly simplified. And I just tried to make the most of it. For a second there, I was kind of taking it day by day and just hoping we were gonna get a call. Oh, okay, it was a joke, touring's back on. What was like the early days of quarantine like? We were actually in Africa with the Hubbards when the pandemic started. We made it out on the last flight back to Nashville, landed in Nashville, and me and Brittany spent probably a month or so at our farm, first quarantining, and I don't think anybody knew what to do at that time, so we went out to the grocery store like once a week and did some yard work around the farm, hung with our dogs, and dude, I was getting my arm back in shape. I was pitching a little bit, I was fishing. I was literally doing everything under the sun other than music, man. Everything was shut down, and I was just doing some soul searching. I was journaling a lot. I was getting up early, working on myself, my mental and physical health. Right around her birthday, April 27th, 8th and 9th, just kind of, posted up in Florida, man, for the rest of the year. And we were living in our carriage house on our property from May till the middle of November as our house was kind of getting finished up being built. You know, we were in a construction zone for months and months, man. It was it was pretty wild. We were in the thick of it, you know? Oh, wow. And to me, I felt like crazy creative being back home on our property with all these construction workers and these craftsmen and these creatives and I'm, kind of starting to work on my project and do my thing. The environment that I was in, I was in Florida at home. I had a co-writing appointment come up randomly right about the time I was about to start writing again after taking some time off. And my publisher hit me up and she goes, hey, Parker Welling and Casey Brown want to write the day before your birthday. And I'm like, why well, am I being party mode? I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to write like the day before my birthday. Like that's asking a lot. I kind of thought that at first. And then I literally go, BK, if you want if you want this to happen, if this thing that's inside of you wants to come out, you've got to show up and get it done and make it happen. And right when I thought that, I connected the dots in my mind and I go, I'm going to finish boat names within that day. I immediately knew that something was different. I was writing from a different place. That's so cool to hear about all it's of that. probably the longest answer you've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wish all interviews You guys were have like a great that. time. <laughs> <laughs> we're <Yeah>. done here. <laughs> Well, I want to ask you about the vibe of the record. I mean, the beach cowboy thing and even your outfit today, which is fantastic. Thank you. But the energy is so um, palpable and it really augments the songs and brings it to this like really awesome place where it's holistic and it's full of love and joy, but it's also just sheer fun. When I started writing and making this, this record, I, I, I wasn't trying to coin anything or, or I didn't have necessarily a, a certain sound. I just kind of knew as we were writing the songs, what it would be, you know? Like, it wasn't like, oh, I wanna do beach islandy, whatever. You could coin it like that, beach islandy, country, kind of rootsy vibes. And I'll, I'll take whatever anybody wants to call it. I, I really attribute a lot to my collaborators and co-writers, my producer, my co-producer, Corey Crowder. Just making music with some of my best friends who've become like family. Just soaking up all the talent of my friends and what Nashville has to offer. I've been mind blown by the talent, man. The players that played on my record, man, are just amazing players. Not only that, they're amazing creatives. And we gave them creative control to, hey, do your dang thing, man. And it was kind of about being in the flow, taking my time. If we had half a song written and we didn't know where to take the second verse, hey, Let's figure it out tomorrow or the next day and go fishing or start a different song. Let's just keep the train rolling. One thing I do want to ask about is if there's any Jimmy Buffett influence. Obviously between oh, Beach Cowboy yeah. and I know you guys did some work down at Key West at his studio. Um, what can you tell us about that angle? I'm a huge Buffett fan mm -hmm. from his music to his branding, to his business, to his mindset. I just love that when you hear Jimmy and you see Jimmy, there's only one Jimmy. 
when it came time to make my debut album and, and figure out the branding and the imaging and the, all the all the things that go with that, I just wanted to do the same thing. I want everybody to know that that's just BK. I'm not trying to be anything I'm not or anybody I'm not. And when they hear me, I just I hope and pray, and I feel like they will know that that's BK. That there's nobody else like him. The way it like blends genre too is like so effective but so cool in a way where like it just sounds like Brian Kelly. I mean, it just has. Man, like, I appreciate that. Yeah. That's all I was going for. I didn't. I just wanted it to sound like me and look like me and, and just be me. So I appreciate that, man. That, that means a lot to me. That's all I ever set out to do with this record is just for people to get to know and hear me. Yeah. And my most authentic self. Yeah, well, you keep doing a great job of setting me up for my next question, <laughs> which is, how does it feel now to be putting out a solo record even? Is it kind of scary? I wouldn't say scary. It's it's just, uh, it's new new grounds, new territory. So just kind of, figuring it out, you know, like even doing press alone is different and like media, not, not having Tyler to bounce it off of, but that's a good place to be where you don't have your feet just sunk in and you're 100% comfortable. I want to operate a little uncomfortable. I want to be pushed. It's where we can shine. That's where a lot of a lot of things are refined and a lot of a lot of good things come from is that like, no, screw it. Mind over matter and I'm gonna go get it done. And I don't remember where I read it. It was somewhere in like either the press material or another interview you had done, but you mentioned something about how both you and Tyler's solo projects also in turn makes Florida Georgia Line even stronger as a project. You know, we're getting back on tour September through November, and I can't imagine what kind of songs are going to be written when we're back on tour after a year of total weirdness, because I'm ready to take what I've learned, everything we've done in the past, and what Tyler's learned on his, doing his thing. I've heard some songs he's written by himself that are absolutely incredible. He's on fire, and I've said this all day, and I believe it, but I feel like he's going to win Songwriter of the Year this year, next year maybe a couple years in a row. I'm just proud of him. I'm proud that we're hustling, we're grinding. Even if it's a little bit separate, we're still together. You know what I'm saying? And, and at the yeah. end of the day, we're adding on to the foundation that we've built and it makes both of us stronger. Wow, and I'm sure you must be incredibly excited to get back on the road and to connect with fans again. Too. Oh yeah. When you, when you feel like you're not living out your calling, and you know, that's being on the road, putting concerts on and, and performing and connecting with our fans and it sucked. We love traveling, we love our fans, we love seeing new things, experiencing new places, having a local beer in a local cool mom and pops restaurant in a city we're touring in. You know, all the local stuff we love, man. That connects us even deeper to our fans uh, as well. So it's all together, writing writing a song, the birth of it, the creating of it, the studio, taking it out to the road, performing it. So you, you, you take one of those out of the equation, something's a little off. So getting back to touring is what we're, most excited about. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody wants me to open up for FGL. That's what I've been hearing a lot. Oh, about. yeah. Well, and I'll do it. I I'll do gladly too. do it. I'll, I do I'm too. cheap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're saying it here. We demand it. Let's go. <laughs> I'll, I'll get up there. Heck yeah. Oh Kick it off, baby. Well, we're so excited for that, too. Thank you so much, Brian, for Thanks taking for some time out of your day and speaking with us. It's been us. fun, brother. You're killing it, dude. Yeah, Happy absolutely. Happy for you. Brian Kelly's debut solo record, Sunshine State of Mind, is out now. For American Songwriter, I'm Joe Vito. Thank you so much for tuning in.